In the first stage of catabolism, macromolecules are broken down to smaller molecules. The breakdown of glucose by glycolysis does not use molecular oxygen. In glycolysis, only a small fraction of ATP is made. Most of the ATP molecules formed from glucose are generated in aerobic conditions. Triacylglycerides are highly concentrated energy storage. They produce more ATP molecules than carbohydrates because they are more reduced, as they contain less oxygen atoms. When compared, one gram of fat can produce more energy than one gram of polysaccharide or one gram of protein. Dietary fats are digested by pancreatic lipases, producing fatty acids and glycerol. Glycerol must get phosphorylated consuming ATP. Also, activation of fatty acids to form acyl coenzyme A consumes ATP. However, one molecule of NADH and one of FADH2 are extracted in each round of the formation of acetylcoenzyme A. This will translate in the formation of three ATP molecules per NADH and two ATP molecules per FADH2. Two carbon units Acetyl groups from all fuels attached to coenzyme A on the free thiol group. This molecule, acetylcoenzyme A, is the link between digestion and the citric acid cycle. In this cycle, two carbon units from acetyl groups will oxidize to carbon dioxide that we exhale. Energy will be released in the chemical bonds of reduced coenzymes. These coenzymes will carry electrons from the matrix of the mitochondria to a series of proteins embedded in the inner membrane of the mitochondria, what is known as the electron transport chain. Since oxygen is the ultimate electron acceptor, oxygen will be reduced to molecules of water. At the same time, when a proton gradient will be created. This will facilitate the production of molecules of ATP from ADP. The citric acid cycle takes place in the mitochondria. Mitochondria are of oval shape. They will have an outer membrane that contains channels, transmembrane proteins important for the passage of polar molecules. The inner membrane of the mitochondrium will also have some proteins bound with coenzymes and cytochromes where electron transport chain can take place. The interior of the mitochondria is called the matrix. This is where the citric acid cycle takes place. Pyruvate produced in glycolysis and from glycerol metabolism must be transformed into acetylcoenzyme A before it enters the citric acid cycle. This transformation is an oxidative decarboxylation producing carbon dioxide, extracting electrons as NADH, is ca catalyzed by a large multimeric enzyme named pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. The main purpose of the citric acid cycle is to oxidize all the carbons producing carbon dioxide, also to extract electrons as three molecules of NADHs that can be sent to the electron transport chain to reach oxygen to produce molecules of water, creating a proton gradient that will assist the formation of ATP molecules.
acetylcoenzyme A is the fuel to the citric acid cycle. The first product of this cycle is citrate, a molecule with three carboxylic acid groups that gives the name to this cycle. The six carbon unit molecule citrate is formed when oxaloacetate, a four carbon unit molecule, combines with acetylcoenzyme A. This reaction is catalyzed by citrate synthase. Hydrolysis of a thioester bond releases free coenzyme A. On the second step of this cycle, citrate must isomerize to isocitrate. This permits further oxidation. The result is a transformation from a tertiary alcohol from citrate to a secondary alcohol in isocitrate that can further get oxidized to a ketone group. On the third step, oxidative decarboxylation of isocitrate by isocitrate dehydrogenase releases carbon dioxide, electrons, and protons. The five carbon molecule of alpha-ketoglutarate combines with coenzyme A and NAD plus to undergo a second oxidative decarboxylation releasing electrons and carbon dioxide. The product succinyl coenzyme A has a high energy thioester bond. Its hydrolysis to release coenzyme A is coupled to the formation of a GTP molecule. From this point, all substances are intermediates of four carbon units. The goal is starting with succinyl coenzyme A, producing succinate to regenerate oxaloacetate that can continue with the cycle. Oxidation of succinate to produce fumarate requires coenzyme FAD. This coenzyme removes two electrons and two hydrogens. Fumarate will have a carbon-carbon double bond that is always trans. Hydration of fumarate yields an alcohol group in the product malate. The last transformation is the oxidation of malate to recover oxaloacetate that can restart the cycle. Now let's explore the chemical transformations in the molecules involved in the citric acid cycle. The when acetylcoenzyme A joins oxaloacetate, it produces the molecule of citrate which is a tricarboxylic acid, six carbon unit molecule. The second step requires the transformation from citrate to isocitrate. Citrate has a tertiary alcohol that cannot be oxidized. It will isomerize, forming a secondary alcohol that can be transformed into a ketone group during the oxidative decarboxylation, losing a carbon dioxide molecule. The product of decarboxylation, alpha-ketoglutarate, will undergo a second decarboxylation when it joins a coenzyme A molecule, producing a thioester bond. Each decarboxylation requires the use of coenzyme NAD+, extracting NADHs. When succinyl coenzyme A gets hydrolyzed, it releases coenzyme A and a molecule of GTP producing succinate. This four carbon unit molecule is in the way of reforming oxaloacetate. The next step 
is the oxidation of succinate to form fumarate, oxidation that takes place by removing two hydrogens from succinate to form fumarate, extracting electrons in the molecule of FADH2. Then after, an addition of a molecule of water will produce malate that can further get oxidized, forming oxaloacetate. The function of the citric acid cycle is not limited to the extraction of electrons and oxidation of carbon to carbon dioxide. It also has a biosynthetic role. When the energy needs of the cell are met, the citric acid cycle provides intermediates for synthesis of many amino acids. Oxaloacetate is a precursor for the synthesis of aspartate. Succinyl coenzyme is a precursor for porphyrins. We have seen porphyrins in the chapter of proteins when we discuss hemoglobins. The heme is actually a porphyrin that contains an iron center. We are going to look at more porphyrins when we discuss the electron transport chain that contains porphyrins that are also electron carriers. Not all amino acids can be extracted from intermediates of the citric acid cycle. Some amino acids are called essential, must be ingested from the foodstuff.